today. Today, y'all, I have an amazing recipe for you guys. We are putting a twist on tacos and we are making the ultimate Southern taco. So let's get started. So guys, Southern tacos, that is what we are making. And to actually make our taco shell, we are going to slice a chicken breast, coat it in a lot of seasonings, lorry seasoning, salt, pepper, hot sauce, and we're going to deep fry it till it gets really crispy. And to stuff our chicken taco shell, I have some collard greens, some yams we're going to make, macaroni and cheese, and cornbread. So here guys, I have my collard greens. I actually got bagged collard greens versus fresh collard greens because I was not cutting those up. It takes way too long. With these, we can just take them out the bag, wash them up real good, and we can cook them. Also here in a, ha in a pot, I have my neck bones going. These have been cooking for a while. They've got a nice and tender, super flavorful. So now we're going to move on and start washing our greens. So guys, before we can actually cook our collars, we have to clean them, okay? Although they came in a the bag, they have not been cleaned, well, to my satisfaction anyway. So to clean them at home, I'm just going to run some hot water into this bowl I have here, and we're going to let them soak for a while to get any excess dirt. neck bones and I also added in some water just to give it enough steam for the collard greens to cook down really nice and tender. I'm also going to add just a little bit more water to make sure that we have enough liquid. Now that we have our broth ready with our neck bone and our chicken broth, we're going to add in our collard greens and I'm also going to add in some baking soda because I want to make sure y'all that my greens are tender. I don't know about y'all, I do not like any tough greens. I don't like tough anything, who does? That's why we're gonna add some baking soda. So once you get all of your greens in there, go ahead and add your baking soda and we'll move on. So to get started, I have a large pot right here that I'm going to fill with some water. I'm going to add some salt and take it over to the stove and we're going to get ready to cook our <laughs> We have our water on the stove. Our collars are almost ready to be seasoned. And over here, we have some peeled sweet potatoes for our yams. We're going to get back to that in a few. Over here, we're going to grab our macaroni and cheese Yes, y'all, don't sue me, okay? We are using box macaroni and cheese, but trust me, y'all, this stuff is not that bad. Add a little bit of milk, butter, chicken stock, and some cheese, and you'll be a-okay. So to get started with this, I'm going to add the pasta into the water. And guys, I grew up on this stuff. My mom always made her mac and cheese with a base of box macaroni and cheese. And trust me, it is, it's good. The sauce inside gives it a really creamy consistency. It doesn't make it dry. I hate dry macaroni and cheese. I know y'all can relate to that. So it's gonna be really amazing. I have my macaroni noodles boiling. I'm just gonna grab some salt to season them up. You want to make sure that you always season your pasta, your rice, whenever you're cooking it because you don't want it to taste bland. So now that we've seasoned that, we're going to let this continue to boil and we're going to move on to seasoning our collard greens. Over here I have some apple cider vinegar, I have some hot sauce, some chili pepper flakes, sugar, onion powder, garlic powder, a bunch of good stuff to season up these greens. So let's go ahead and open up this pot, y'all. I'm excited. It smells so good and it hasn't even been cooking that long yet. I also forgot to mention, guys, do not throw away that cheese sauce out of the macaroni and cheese. Set it to the side and we're gonna use it later for our macaroni. To season up our collars, we're gonna start off with some salt. Of course, you need salt in everything that you cook in life. Remember that, y'all. So we're gonna add some salt 
And then we're going to go in with some Texas peat. Y'all, this is the hot sauce of the South. You need Texas peat in your pantry, okay? It's going to give it a really good spice. And it's also going to help with like the vinegary aspect of the colors as well because Texas peat is also a little tangy in addition to its spiciness. We're also going to go in now with some crushed red pepper flakes. This is going to give a lot of good spice to our colors. And some apple cider vinegar. I like to use apple cider vinegar opposed to like white vinegar because it has a more, a more earthy flavor to me. It's just more flavorful than white vinegar. I always use white vinegar for like potato salads and things like that. But for collards, we're going to use apple cider vinegar. Okay, I'm going to go in with some onion powder. A good bit of that to give it some flavor. We need seasoning, y'all. And I'm also going to go in with some garlic powder. And this just gives me so much memories. Every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, my grandma would always make a pot of collard greens, macaroni and cheese, cornbread, all the works, and it was always so good. Like, I never understood how she could make everything so good. Never messed up anything, never burned anything. It was just always good. We're gonna go in with some sugar, about uh, a fourth a cup or so, depending on how much you like, how you like your colors. And from this point, guys, we have seasoned and we're going to let it cook a little bit more, give it a good stir, and we're going to come back and taste it, okay? So after we taste it, we're going to add whatever else we may need, if it's more vinegar, more hot sauce, chili pepper flakes, whatever it may be. So here we have peeled sweet potatoes. That is what we're going to be using to make our candy yams. And I have a bowl, so from now I'm just going to chop up my potatoes, place them in this bowl, and then we'll come back to make our sweet brown sugar sauce for our candy yams. Our sweet potatoes are cut up, ready to become some really good yams. I have my pan right here, and I also went ahead and melted some butter to get started for our sauce to go on top of our yams. So into this butter, I'm gonna add some Aunt Jemima original pancake syrup. This is amazing in candied yams and I know almost everybody has that in their refrigerator, so go ahead and use that. I'm gonna add a little bit into my butter, like so. I'm also gonna add in some brown sugar. And remember guys, this is up to your tasting. You can add as much or as less of each ingredient that you like. cooking and I also added in some cream of chicken and I've just been mixing that up I'm going to add in some butter melted butter right on in there and at this point I'm also going to add our cheese sauces from earlier this is going to allow our macaroni to get really really creamy and moist Guys, I added in some sour cream and I'm also cutting up some Colby Jack cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like. Now guys, that I have all of the cheese in there, I'm just going to give this a nice stir and this is starting to look good already. We're going to get all of that sour cream incorporated in those cheese pieces. And then, just to make sure that our macaroni is not dry, I'm going to add in some milk. You want to add a good bit of milk to give you a really moist macaroni and cheese.
ready to make our chicken taco shells. So I have a pot here and I just turned my eye on about medium high and I'm going to add this vegetable oil into my pot. I have five large chicken breasts, but you can use how much ever you choose to. This is my first time guys trying to make taco shells out of chicken breast. So we are gonna to learn together. Now I'm assuming that I just need to cut this down the middle and try to make a taco shell. So let's see. So guys, what I have done is I just cut in the middle of the chicken breast and I tried to stay away from the edges because we want this to be a taco shell. So it needs to be able to hold what we're stuffing it with. So just cut it along the middle. Don't go too far down on the edges and you should be good. Okay, our chicken taco shells are done and it is time to fry these bad boys. In this bowl here, I have some all-purpose flour, about two to three cups. And to season it up, I'm gonna use some large seasoning salt and some black pepper. I'm also gonna use some Texas peat hot sauce. Um, I'm going to use this to help with the crunchiness of our chicken. Once that moisture from the chicken and the hot sauce hits the flour, we'll be able to squeeze it just like this between our fingers and get some nice crispy coating pieces for our chicken. And I also guys, I decided to add some breadcrumbs, just some that I had in my cabinet to help with the crunchiness and the brownness of the chicken. guys our flour is ready and our chicken is ready as well so we are going to start breading this to fry it to start I'm going to just grab one of our chicken breasts and we're going to sit it in this flour and you just want to coat the entire thing in flour and then you can start to see the moisture from the chicken grabbing onto the flour and you want to just press that flour in there just like this and you can even squeeze pieces of it on there and that's going to give us some crunchy um, coating when we fry the chicken. So you just grab your hot sauce and excuse my hands guys, they are messy from this flour. And you just dash a little bit on there for some moisture. And you can see that it's actually starting to make clumps with the flour. And that's going to give you some really crunchy bits when you fry up your chicken.